Hey y'all, this is Amok, Madam Hexa, and Caitlin Case, and this is Trouble Comes in Threes. This podcast discusses scandalous topics like communication and sexual health, along with kink, leather, and ethical non-monogamy. If you're under 18, please leave us and check out scarletteen.com. For those over 18, welcome, and let's get naughty. Our Why topic? are you both looking at me? <laughs> because you're, you're, uh, you're going to help provide some insight on today's topic, which is pegging, pegging and strapping, strapping, which is essentially the same thing, just different like um, term for use of a strap-on for penetrative play. So what is the difference between pegging and strapping? Uh, strapping primarily is used in queer women communities. It's usually for insertion into a vagina. Or, um, I, mean, I suppose you could put it elsewhere, but typically speaking, it's between women or between vaginas is, is usually kind of the denoter on strapping versus pegging. Pegging is typically um, up your butt. It doesn't have to be, I don't know, but I would still call it, and I would still call it strapping if I was using it on a girl's anus, or, mm-hmm. you know, I would still, I would still call it a strapping session as opposed to a pegging session. Agreed. Yeah. That's how I kind of use the words as well. Yeah. And a lot of the people I know do. Strapping is, is a female receiving it, regardless of the hole. Right. In the backside. Right. Um, or the <laughs> underside. <laughs> um, the bottom half. More holes, more problems. I don't know. Because <laughs> I don't know if I would use strapping for, like, blowjobs. I would just say, like... That's just fellatio. That's like... You know, just... She just... She blew my strap on. Like, yeah. Um... But then pegging is predominantly when it's done to a male person receiving. Right. Um, and regardless of well, the gender or sexual orientation of the person on the top. Right. Right. Woo! That was long-winded. But, yes, important distinctions. Yes. And we're looking at you, Caitlin, because you actually had your first strapping experience with us as well. It's good hey. for us. Yeah. Y'all are getting all the cherries. <laughs> Mark and I have given Caitlin a lot of new experiences. Not just sexy ones. You know, mundane, yeah. you know, everyday experiences too. But, you know, we like her to explore new things. And we're safe I'm, people to do that with. So. And, I'm and we like helping. new things. Like strapping. Yes. Do you want to tell a little bit about that experience? I don't even know like where to start with it. Um, well, I don't know. So I... I guess the beginning would be that uh, I... (laughs) Start at the beginning. That's normally where things begin. Uh, (laughs) um, So I have never, like, really... So I explored being with women in, like, middle school, high Mm -hmm. school-ish. Up until starting to pursue things with uh, Madam Hexa and Amok, I hadn't been... Intimate with a woman with since like oh god tenth grade, so, uh, so it's been a while, almost ten years, almost ten, yeah no almost almost ten years, um and so I they have been opening my eyes to many things and one of the things we had talked about is I have had sex with penis owners. But I've never had, like, a strap-on or, like, a dildo used on me aside from, like, self-masturbation. So you've done penetrative play with, with living pulsing yes, penises. Yes, pulsing, pulsing penises. Pulsing, pulsing penises. 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 Um, I had not done penetrative play with uh, non-pulsing penises. I'm sorry, the bulldog, if you can hear him walking around. I took off his collar, but now he's naked and upset with me because he <laughs> doesn't like to be without his collar. Now he thinks he's getting a bath. So same, that's my, bro, that's my, same. <laughs> he does not like to be without his collar, and I've confused him, and now he thinks he's getting a bath. Um, yeah. So you've had penetration before. So this was not an experience where this was the first time you're doing any kind of insertion into no. your vagina because you're our vagina owner. I am a vagina oh, owner. Um, okay. I have had things inside there before. Um... <laughs> So the strapping session you had, it was not the first time you've had insertion play in your vagina. No. I have been with uh, penis-owning partners, and so I've had penises in there have and you, other things. You've had yeah, dildos. Yeah, dildos, um, fingers, things like that. It wasn't right. my first like penetrative experience ever. That changes the experience. If it's yeah. your first time being it penetrated, um, in the case of my baby girl, she'd had nothing... Um, inserted vaginally before, you know. Yeah. She'd only done, like, clitoral stimulation and stuff like that. I mean, other than, like, small digits and things like that. Um, 
So for her, her first strap session yeah. was very different from yours. Yes. Because it was a very big mental barrier as well. Because also it's shaped like a penis and yeah. she's a lesbian. So Especially like, the unicorn one. Yes. That's why we use a non... One that doesn't look realistic. Yeah. Like a a non phallic one. Oh, well, it's, it's still, well, it's still yeah. It just doesn't have like veins, veins and, and features and, and it's balls, not a but... human skin color. That That's kind of fair. thing. You know, because it was like... And it doesn't have balls because that would just completely send her over the edge. <laughs> and to be honest, I'm not a big fan of having the big balls hanging down yeah. when I'm wearing a strap on either because I'm like... I got thick thighs and then they yeah. rub in on the balls and it's not fun. But no, so it was my first pen- penetrative experience. It was just my first non-biological. Did we use the full size one on her? Yes. Yeah, we did. Oh, good job. Good we, job. You went straight Well, we in. started with the other one um, and then... Yeah, we started with the... We were like, you're like, this is too easy. I feel like we you could take you a bigger we one. It. Well, because, uh, you know, Amak has played with you. She's got little paws, but yes. she's had several digits inserted vaginally in you before so we knew that with the right stimulation and the right taking enough time to open you up properly that you could take that because yeah. her, her little mitt like the width of her hand is wider than that yeah insertable so. one so yeah and you can very it. tiny paws for anyone who's she does wondering. have small hands but I'm very very she does small have small paws. hands but it, the whole hand is, is is wider than the dildo we used yes for in case, so. case. but yeah so no it was it was an experience. It was a very enjoyable experience. It was mm-hmm. a very new experience because right. I it it definitely was different. Have like it, not that it felt different, but it was like a different energy for sure. Oh yeah, it's a different energy because I'm a woman. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and you're and the the partners you've had penetrated play with before have been We're men, men, so it's it's it is a different energy. Yeah, but it was fun, and it does it does feel. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it, I notice if I use an insertable, a synthetic insertable. Uh, it does feel different. It's a different material. It's not flesh. It's not blood. It's it feels and different. There's a depending on what type it is mm-hmm. for me. Like the stiffness the of stiffness it. Stiffness yeah. is very different. Like the give. Yours yeah. was very unforgiving, but I loved yes. it. Yes, yes, it is a pretty firm silicone. That one's that one's that is unforgiving is a good word for that. But one. our partner also does have a very large penis as well, and right. so it wasn't necessarily like out of the norm. I think it's his is thicker and yours is a little bit longer. Mine is longer, his yeah. is thicker, I guess. Yeah. Right? We measured. So. We did a dick measurement. So. We did a literal we, dick measuring yes. with each other. We, <laughs> we did get a, a few like little like service boops where I was like, oh, hi. Yeah, well, I tried to. Yeah, I did try to avoid like ramming your cervix because like, what am I looking for? <laughs> what am I digging to? Nothing. Um, and we wanted you to enjoy the experience. Both of us, we wanted you to enjoy the experience because we ideally would like to do it again with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, make you a little rock star. <laughs> <laughs> <Ta-da>. <laughs> She's throwing up the shocker hand gesture right now. Uh, oh, is. that's right. This was rock star. No, 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 no you had it right. You that's, were right. The, that's the Trekkie. Oh wait, yeah, yeah, you yeah. had it right. Yeah, that was right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you want to be a rock star or a Trekkie? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we. Did. It was like squish tried, squish tried. Were you a little but, nervous um, taking the strap on for the first time? Oh, absolutely. Um, and I. I'm nervous a lot around the both of you because there are a lot of new experiences because honestly I am very We're pretty scary. I am well, you are gorgeously scary. I am scaroused all the time. Um, but for me it's I well, yes, I had been with women before. Women were my first like sexual experience. Mm-hmm. I was with women far before I was with men. Right. But I Never really did a lot. It went right. to like kissing and maybe playing around a little bit with like a little bit of fingering, but right. there was really nothing more to it than that. It was definitely and you were still, young, so you're still yeah, it was still the, like ex- it was still too. like the experimental stages, sure. um, things like that. Um, and so it is nerve wracking because there is not only is it a new experience, um, but it's that overwhelming of what if I'm not good enough? What if I don't respond enough? What if I don't give back oh, enough? No. And so I I do have that fear, especially when it comes to things like providing pleasure for women. Like, that is a big hang-up for dick. me. It's a fake You don't have to please it. It's a fake dick. Clarification. If at any point you did not enjoy or you did not want to continue, neither of us would have be been hurt. upset. No. At all. No, I know you that. know. But good to say but I'm Yes, it's good to say it And it's actually, it's a part of I Get Writing Assignments in Mind this week is um, on the sexual side of being with women and what I am comfortable and what I am seeking from both of you. In play. In play, in as girlfriends. Partners, um, things like that. And like, 
like one of the opening lines is I'm very comfortable with both of you and I know that if I ever express that something is uncomfortable or I'm not enjoying it that both of you will stop no Absolutely. question like no question about Absolutely. it yeah. no but and so like it's like it's scary but it's a safe kind of scary because right. I know if I don't like it once we get going or if the feeling is a little bit off like both of you will respect that right. and like not push the subject further but I am very open to it new experiences like the strapping experience and it was open open orifice open (laughs) (laughs) i open up in so many ways you do we open you up in a lot of ways right oh yes (laughs) i will say and since uh, i have a question for you real quick okay so when you were when you used to proton things that was pegging one of the services you offered or was it more performance based or so actually i didn't do it in my proton sessions okay um they were predominantly non-sexual okay like fair still kinky and everything but right. i'm not responsible for you getting off Fair. that's yeah. not my duty. no that's right. not like, your job handle that somewhere else right um my pegging experiences were actually with partners personal experience personal experiences, professional. Okay. yeah that were around um a friend of mine used to host swing parties like very right. private everybody knew each other it was the same group every right. other weekend right um and there were some guys there that were really into it mm-hmm. and i was like I would love to explore that. Yeah. Uh, so that's where I got to start playing around with it. Okay. Was with um, male individuals. Were they experienced bottoming and pegging? Or were they also kind of their first time and you kind of felt it out together? One of them was a big ass whore. Okay. Well, it's kind of nice because was... then you could be like, is this right? Tell me if I'm doing this right because you've done this before. Right. So it's nice. He, uh, he would get pegged by and or fucked by just about anything that's fair oh well that's why you're at the party though (laughs) yeah he would put his dick in things um which is part of why we were at that kind of party Mm -hmm. um the whole point was that it was a lot of cross-sexual between all the different people right um lots of voyeurism and exhibitionism sure for me it's also in that kind of setting or if i'm in a public like a public play space where it's right. allowed and I do it. It's absolutely the exhibition. Oh, it. it's the yes. the power and the like, watch me fuck this. Yes. My dick I bought at the store. Right. And also because you're so, you're so petite in stature as well. There's got to be like that extra power trip. Like, you're yeah. Because like, my dick's top huge. of the world. <laughs> right, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I get the titties, the counterweight, I think, to like, you know. Yeah, the titties <laughs> definitely counterweight. But yeah, I'm five foot two and... My so dick. No. <laughs> my starter dick, which is also my like my your, starter dick, your starter dick, <laughs> Aww, twins. is like eight ish, eight or nine, yeah, eight, eight or nine, nine inches two. long, oh, yeah. solidly girthed. Yeah. They're they are not dainty. It's a nice dick. No. Um, it's a nice good dick. dick. <laughs> when when people try to talk shit to me, I'm like, look, I promise my dick's bigger than yours, and I have a collection, right? Because I bought mine at a store. Get off yes. the box. Here. Um, Can't grow one store bought spine. Yes, exactly. y'all. Yo. So um. So those were my first experiences Mm -hmm. were um, there were two individuals at the parties in particular Mm -hmm. who really, really loved getting pegged. Right. Um, And so that's kind of how I learned to control it and move with it Mm -hmm. and how much I absolutely love Love it. it. (laughs) That is, Uh, that is one thing. Learning the, learning how to move because you can't feel, there's no sensation as a top for this dick. I have no idea what it's hitting. Uh, You know, you have to really figure out kind of you got to know your dick how long is it how hard is it and knowing your bottom is helpful too knowing how they respond to it so i think a important now that we were getting into like yeah. more in-depth stuff than yeah. the amazing first experience <laughs> which was great we, oh, we might dip in that with some questions don't worry we'll yeah. be back for you okay. um generally for strapping and pegging mm-hmm. It involves a harness of some sort. Yes. There are a few brands that make harnessless ones. Yes. Um, like Fieldo. Have you ever used one of those? That's an insertable bit for me too. Yeah. I have used one. They're not my favorite because I feel like it's a little distracting. I don't like it as much because even though my my pussy is like Fort Knox. Yeah. When I get onto something. Yeah. I'm the person who has gotten hands stuck in her vagina during fisting. Right. Um, but I, I like to not, stay focused. I don't yeah. have to worry about it. I just don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And I don't really feel that it adds the, the internal ones for me add to the, the play. experience. No, it doesn't. Um, cause I'm way more focused on like making sure it doesn't fall out of me. Before, right. Like, like no offense, but I'll make sure it don't come out of me so. first. <laughs> now I do know some people who absolutely love their fieldos. Yeah. They like the way they feel. They like the way that they move. 
it's an option. Um, prior to those kinds coming out, it was a harness worn around the hips, around the pelvis, mm-hmm. a ring of some sort, yep. generally, and then a dildo attachment put through the ring right. that keeps it attached to the harness. Right. Most of the dildos, they have, like, bases to them mm-hmm. that you would, like, stand them up with. They're also actually designed primarily to be used in this. It, there's, like, a little pad that goes. Sometimes, again, there's a little pad sometimes. Sometimes the harness is you are the pad. And so the flat base of the insertable rests against your body. And that keeps it upright. That way it doesn't go flippy floppy. Yeah. And they come in a wide range. Styles. I absolutely. Materials. I think the one that I have still because I need to get a a new one um I got it because it was washable Mm -hmm. yeah which is a huge thing yes um but it was like 35 dollars they're not expensive the Mm -hmm. sex store like it was super they're not expensive it's cute it's like blue cheetah print it is blue cheetah print mine is my my washable one is just black oh oh you're talking about the leather one Uh. I'll get to the leather one Uh. um the heart the washable one like yours it was just it was maybe it was like 30 bucks a couple years ago and you just Water it up and throw it in the washer. I throw it in a pillowcase. I don't know if that's necessary. That's just like I was told to do that once, and so I've just kept doing it. It keeps <laughs> the straps from going. Fraying like, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah like, maybe that's it. Um, but I do have also a very nice leather one. It is it is beautiful, but that is one, you know, because leather is more porous, mm-hmm. you know, so um, that one you got to be a little selective on who you're using it with. Mm-hmm. Is it just for show? What is that cat eating? I don't know. And that kind of thing. Um, you know, you can disinfect them, but truly it is a porous material. So it's yeah, one of those yeah. things like, oh, I used it with his partner, so can't use it really with anyone else. Or within a limited circle of people, that kind of thing. So yeah. it's, something to, it's not one that I would use for like public play or things like that unless it was just for show. Yeah. yeah. It's super hot. It is. I, I love it. She, it oh. I was here when it got here. Oh, and I got to help her the try it on. The around the butt cheek like uh, that. It's she's like, like, can you tighten my straps? I was like, I will never say no. <laughs> I was exposed to pegging a little bit um, prior to meeting both of you. I never partaked in it, but I had a partner who really, really enjoyed it. And so it was always kind of like one of those things that we would revisit. Like, are you comfortable doing it now? No, it's nope. a little too toppy for me. It's a lot and too toppy. It's a lot toppy. That is something well, like, so like service toppings a thing, but I, that is that and is. And I a, tried to even think about it because someone suggested, well, why don't you try thinking about it as a service you're providing to to them? Because at the time I was an S type to that person, mm-hmm. and they were like, I really, really want and need this. So I was like, I am trying really hard to be okay with giving it to you, but it's too toppy i don't really top for anything even service topping i think i've service topped once for a wax play removal scene because i was trying to teach that person's partner how not to slice their skin off while okay. using a knife to take wax off right. and because i had used knives on myself to take wax off right i kind of knew what angle it needed to be at right. you know the pressure and stuff but as far as like actually doing a thing to someone especially someone i'm involved with i was like I don't think I can. Well, the other thing about pegging is a lot of the times, and this isn't always, um, because straight men like pegging too. It's not just gay men. It's not just bisexual men. It's any orientation can enjoy. It's a good stimulation, whatever. One of the two guys from the party was predominantly heterosexual. Right. Mm -hmm. They got feel good stuff they up do there. there's a there's a happy button up there but a, a lot of the times and this is regarding your whole do it as a service yeah. but a lot of the times you can be in that moment and you're having to and you're doing this for a partner you're pegging partner and the headspace of your partner can change yeah and you know there it's likely to have been that the headspace of your partner would not have been in top mode at all no you know because you can flip that switch and you can turn someone from a man to a boy really quickly you know, and so it, I can see where that would be, would have extra yeah. been difficult for you. Especially because, like, I just, I don't know. I, and so it's one of the things, like, I don't even know if I could do it in, like, a strapping perspective for, like, a female partner. Or, like, it's just not something I don't know if I can do. You the might act benefit of. from the, the double ended ones. So, yeah. where you would be giving and receiving. Because as you push forward, if you're both vagina users, yeah. it's going to be the, moving back and forth in you as like, well. The closest thing that I have thought of that I would be okay with is actually something Amok had brought up. And she's like, Ooh. well, you don't like squishy bits. 
Oh, um, and so she's like, I will literally just saran. We were, oh, right. we were doing a cam scene, like, and she was like, an object, and right? she then? like smacked to see if like her dildo would stick to me, and it did. Right, it does. It does. And she's like, we could just saran wrap you and stick my dildo to you, and then I'll fuck my dodo while it's on you. I was like, right. okay, so that plays into my objectification. Because then you're, you're a sex toy, and then, then I'm a sex gotcha. toy. Okay, it's she's not, not me really talking me. She is using you, using me as an object. Okay, All and right. so, so I was like, I could maybe get behind that. Right. So I don't know if I'd qualify that as strapping. I don't think. But. I don't know. But it was the closest thing my brain could come to. Sure, 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 sure. As in far as like the whole technical bit. But yeah, no, I, yeah. I would I would fully support the thing I want to watch. <laughs> that, that can be yeah. arranged. Yeah. But yeah, so like it's, I don't know if it's ever something that I could do to somebody. And you don't have to. You can just take my strap and you can take a muck strap. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Will Eiffel Tower or DP that? It'll be fine. It'll be fun. Three holes in a waiting. Um, so I think that's something important, both when pegging men and women, mm-hmm. is lube. Yes. Also just fucking in general. But yeah. don't be a hero. Don't do that. There's no need to do that. And go slow. So one, mm-hmm. make sure that the individual you're going to be pegging is well lubricated. Yes. Already, yes. before you even try it. And make sure that your dildo is also lubricated mm-hmm. and ready. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also put condoms on. On your strap-ons, people. We yes. talked about that in a prior episode about sexual yep. health and awareness. Please put protection on the dildo. Because guess what? This whole thing, like, oh, it doesn't feel the same. The dildo doesn't care. The dildo doesn't have feelings. Put a little jacket on it. Yep. Be polite. It's going to stay as hard as it currently is. No matter Regardless. What. Yes. Doesn't what need any your coaching. Your always says, uh, strap-on blowjobs take forever. <laughs> yes. Strap-on blowjobs take forever. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. Um, it's definitely. Are you? Oh, sorry, when you when you do when you do pegging, am I, are yes. you somebody that offers a reach around, or does it depend? <laughs> so little arms. You do have little arms. <laughs> little arms. <laughs> so part I of get it, your balls. <laughs> so it depends. Mm-hmm. Um, for the majority of people I peg. Mm-hmm. My between my tit size and my arm length I can't get there. I can't get around right. to fidangle the front portion. Do you ever do like, face to face? So we generally do it face to face so if I can fidangle if the I front portion. Because then I can fidangle the front portion. And I can, um, spit I can in your either. Face. <laughs> also, I will also just spit in their face right. while they're face down too. You right, can right, just right. twist their head yeah, and yeah, like spit true. on them. That's true. Um, <laughs> the kitty is like grossed out entirely. I'm so scaroused. She doesn't know how she <laughs> feels about it right now. That's all right. Um, but so, yeah. So if I'm going to be doing something other than just, just plowing plowing into them, I will generally have them on their back. Yep. And depending on what the height of the thing we're on, <laughs> most beds are too tall for me. Hotel beds are generally very short. Oh, nice. Um, I'll put like a pillow under their butt to give me a, a better angle. angle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I am trying to get into, I do a lot of anal pegging, both on right. guys and girls. Right. Like that's that. Well, we've been, we've been through that. We're anal sluts. We've been through that. Yeah, we love. Um, <laughs> and so it uh, tilting their hips up gives you better tends access. to give me better access, yeah. and then I have access for the whole front. Right, exactly. So if so I whatever else use, I'm going to be doing here, regardless of what the plumbing situation is, I can use vibrators. I can use my hand. Mm-hmm. I can spit on them. Right. Like, all of those sexy fun times Woo-hoo. from that direction. Height difference makes does. <laughs> yeah, I will. So funny story regarding height difference and pegging. I'm not your boy. Huh. Oh well, that's yeah. Yeah. So my funny story about pegging. Uh, I had a guy back on the bed. Uh huh. Back, back down. Because height situation. Right, right. I was standing beside the bed. We were in a hotel, mm-hmm. and. I'm going at him, going at him, going at him. Great time. Like, right. absolutely fun. Super, super enjoyable mm-hmm. session. And then the next day, I'm like, why do I have these straight line bruises across my thigh? The fuck is this from? <laughs> it was from the bed frame. Because oh, no! <laughs> I'm so tiny. And you're and hitting was, the bed frame. I was <laughs> slamming into the bed frame the entire time. So I had these perfectly straight lines across my thigh oh my that were bruised. And I was just like, oh, oh. I gave myself treats. Ooh, for me. Ooh. It's my souvenir. 
No, uh, height difference. I'm only 5'7". So I say only 5'7", or you're 5'2". So I'm, I'm, I'm an Amazon in comparison. But 5'7", <laughs> not a super tall woman. Um, and uh, I was actually going to teach a class on pegging um, at CLAW, which the pandemic had canceled. That's the Cleveland Leather the Annual weekend. weekend. Yes, very sad. Um, so I was going to teach a pegging class. And your boy... Uh, excitedly volunteered and once we all the permissions and everything he wanted to do that so i thought it'd best since i'd never worked with him before to have a a private practice session because i like to know the noises they make what what i mean he's and obviously he an expert also he he is he's a big old slut and i love <laughs> yes, him for it me too. um but he also still had his platinum star which means that yes, that he was has big never thing. been anywhere near a woman a woman's Lady bits yes. of any sort. She, he was a cesarean. He yes. has never had sex with a woman of any variety of sexual mm-hmm. interaction. Mm-hmm. So, so another part of that was that because I thought, well, it might be. I don't know. I, I would think it would be emotional a little bit because it is a. He's a very gay boy, and so it's like a hard shift to be like, I am allowing a woman. Yeah, to do these things me. to me now, that, you know. But his, I loved his his reason for it was like, I'm a proud gay man, but I am first and foremost a bottom and a whore. <laughs> so <laughs> that was his response when people asked him, like, oh, like you're gonna let a woman do that to you, and that was his response. So this I appreciate he's that. in consideration to our family. Exactly. Yes. I, so I appreciated a that a lot because there is, you know, there is. I hate it, but it does happen a lot. Um, That's gay stigma. men who bottom for female dominance or female tops for things that are inherently sexy, like either CBT or pegging, things like that, sometimes get a bit of a bad rap from their the fellow gay men yep. and things like that because, oh, are you really gay because you let a woman do it? That is a discussion for a whole nother time. Biphobia <laughs> is real. Yes. And it occurs both in the het pan side of life, yeah. but also so extensively in, in, in the, the queer oh, LGBT world. Yeah. Yes. We have a whole episode on that. Yes. Um, but... So we were going to have a practice session, and what is he, 6'2", 6'1", 6'2", something like that? He's tall. He's almost yeah. as tall as our partner, so he's yeah, like 6'3". He's, he's fucking tall, right? Yeah. He's tall and skinny. Like, so he's like he's just tall. under alpha. Yeah, so yeah. He's, he's, he's tall and skinny. And so I was like, okay, well, I had requested a bench for the mm-hmm. uh, convention, I guess you call it. Um, so I said, okay, well, we went to a, a, a friend of ours who has a private dungeon, and we trust him a lot, and I have a lot of respect for him. So he allowed us to use his play space because yeah. he had the equipment. So okay, perfect. Um, that was the day actually that my slave forgot my toy bag oh, and no. left my whole toy bag at home. And so then he had to drive 30 minutes to go get it. And that was fun. <laughs> but uh, so we get ready and, you know, we had a little warm up session. There's the music going and like a, a little bit of pushing around and like kind of prepping him and things like that. Um, he brought all his stuff, like he brought the lube and everything like this. And then I get him on the bench and like I had been opening him up a little digitally and like I had a small prostate wand just to like mm-hmm. see how he was at. And then uh, I said, okay, you ready? And had the condom on the dildo and I realized that um, his butthole was too high. <laughs> I couldn't reach it. <laughs> I, was wearing, I was wearing flat boots. I know. I usually am always in high heels. But yes. I thought, well, I want to get a good balance. I'll probably wear flats for the class anyway. So I wore the boots that I was thought I was going to wear for the class. And then I realized that uh, he's too tall on that bench. And I could not reach his butthole. So we actually had to end up on the floor to <laughs> have the practice <laughs> session where he was kind of like, I had I had to like one knee on the ground and like one foot flat. So you're kind of like. You had to like the porn hat. star it. It kind of looked like I was riding a pony. Like it was really <laughs> kind of funny. But um, so it was like a little awkward. And then I like I skinned my knee because I'd fell like the day. Oh, yeah. So like I was like, oh, of course, that's the knee that's on the ground. I was like, oh. This. So yeah. that was a little unpleasant, but it was a lot of fun. So uh, he thing. came home with rave reviews. Oh, good! Started. I'm glad. I was a little. I mean, it was a lot of fun. We laughed the whole time. I told him to brace himself, and he didn't. He knocked himself in the head against the wall, and you know, good stories. Um, but physics matter. Yes, physics matter. Angles matter. Um, height matters. Like you said, if you're you know a very large person or your bottom's a very large person, these are all things you take into account. So there's ways around that. I'm also a fan of like face to face, mainly because I want to look in your eyes when I wreck you, because that's my style. But I also agree, because you have access to everything then and tickle <laughs> yeah. tickle and all that. Um, it's a good time, and also like you can be like, hold your own damn knees, like help me help you. Yes, I will use your nipples 
As leverage. Yeah. Leverage. <laughs> While forget I'm the pounding the forget, fuck out of forget you. Forget the pigtails. Give me the nipples. I'll hang on to them titties. Like. I have little arms. I can't reach. I can't reach there. there. <laughs> No, oh, but it's it, it's a it's a good time, and um, I I do peg myself. Um, so he um, he's hetero flexible. He's not quite sure where he sits on the spectrum. Um, and I wish he could have joined us tonight because he had his first topping pegging experience, which I thought would be a unique experience because he's a penis owner, and then he used a synthetic penis to top. So maybe I can uh, get an interview him with him later. I will say it was really interesting trying, since this was his first time topping it. Right. It was at my house. Yes. It was yes. with my strap on. Was that another party? It was, yeah. We have a Look at us having we, great parties. We have the best parties. Especially yeah. because we're all quarantined together. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. We have two houses and we just bounce between the two. That's true. I think that's yes. it. That's true. Um, so I had mine because it was our house and I had to help him. Get, into, get it on because right. he wasn't quite sure, which was really interesting because I don't have a dick, right? So, <laughs> so when I strap oh, it on myself, yeah, pull all the way flat. And, well, and I keep it, um, I keep it lower on my mound, yeah, because like right here, yeah. I really like the pressure, yeah, that it on that, that bone there, yeah, it's nice. The the humping gets right into there, and mm. it makes me super wet. It's real good for me. Girl, me too. Oh, it's so <laughs> nice. Um. But he has a penis in that spot. That's true. Yeah. It is in the way. And so it was it was interesting trying to figure out like the exact it. placement of it. Right. Also, he's very sensitive about people touching his genitalia. Yeah, and he was not wearing his chastity device and either. He was not so wearing it's not his like chast- you could like it was just if it if it moved, I'm sorry, it moved in the way. No, he was sans chastity device. Yeah. And so I mean I did, not- <laughs> I did ask beforehand. I was like, sure. can I touch? Because there was no way I was gonna, gonna, yeah. gonna be the straps underneath. Yeah, because yeah, between um, thighs. Yeah. But so to get that on there and then to kind of coach them upon occasion. Right, right. Because again, it was a strap on. You can't even feel though it. he is a male penis owner, his penis was not involved. My right. dick was. Right. So he's going at it with the bottom mm-hmm. and it would slide out because for some unbeknownst reason, I do not know why, they did not pick a beginner position. No. <laughs> they picked, a half spooning weird kind of thing. They picked a like upper level. So positioning is really, really important. Mm-hmm. Straight on. The bottom was a very experienced bottom. Yes. The, yeah. The top, not so much. Right. And so like when you're first starting out in pegging or shopping kind of the like Go. Missionary, missionary or doggy, doggy style yeah, this. where you're you're both going the same direction confident, tend to be confident about the angle confident about the speed confident about your aim and you know like how long your dick is how long your stroke is yeah um they were not they were in this was, like it was twisted madness, yes some karma sutra something or another it was it, oh, it was, was amazing to watch it, it was, was so much fun to, to watch because they're both very very handsome boys yeah so uh, it, was, it was very sexy they did fuck the so there was an air mattress they wanted an air mattress yeah they fucked the air mattress across the room and then i had to like <laughs> scoot it back bump it in rhythm because right, we didn't want to interrupt because <laughs> i didn't want to stop them but then i like sat at the end of the bed and, like, while they were doing their thing she was like a little referee it was great and then like i'm trying to like give them their privacy because i wasn't sure how the bottom was gonna feel having you with me watching right because you guys are close because we're really close and so i was like trying to be like considerate but also like keeping an eye on making sure everything was going right. safely yes. up there right. and so i would have to yell like it's out. It's out. <laughs> it's out of bounds. Like a football match. It's out. Out of bounds. Um, because, you know, you can't strike feel it. is different. Right. And you don't feel it if you suddenly aren't in a hole. Right. Which was hilarious because the bottom was like, oh, I was using those as breathers. That's, That's what, what he said. He was like, he was like, shh, don't tell him I need a break. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, again, it takes strap-on strap-on take forever. forever. <laughs> also, strap on take forever and that particular bottom is a power bottom yep he wants to be fucked for like hours at a time well which wish she granted which she got so that worked yeah. out well for everybody and then uh it gave uh the top some exercise so much they wanted some exercise he got some, so they both got cardio serious ab yes. workout cool. there you go yeah. yep there you go um but the position was did he have his hat on when he did too he was, yes. he yeah he kept the baseball cap yeah. on. oh baseball my cap. god at least he, he had, like, socks on oh no that would be funny though 
Did he? Wait, did he? They almost did, oh. but I don't think they did. I would have called them on that. <laughs> right. Put the like, mm. socks on. It's like when he yeah. bartended last night, he had this cute little bartending outfit on. But I was like, no, no, put the puppy slippers on. I want to see this. Yes. <laughs> I, the first time he bartended for us, I was like, oh, I like the puppy slippers. <laughs> the They're puppy nice slippers touch. are a nice touch. <laughs> They're so cute. Yeah. Um, but even in that case, the very first thing, like after getting them strapped up, was mm-hmm. like, here's a condom, here's some lube, and then like halfway through, here's more some more lube. lube. Here's some more lube. Right. Right. No, it's a, it's important. Definitely lube. Lube is important. Please don't act like it's not. And you're not tough for not taking it. You know, there's, there's no It reason. adds to the pleasure. It does. Because it allows things to slip and slide, slide and get more contact. Yeah. Absolutely. What do you, you've got something to say, Kayla. So, as a bottom who absolutely hates lube. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Because, <laughs> so, <laughs> Madam you. Hexa was the first top I had used uh, lube with that I didn't want to throw up. From using well, we were, we were because cognizant. yes, because they both know I don't like like wet, drippy, drippy. squishy things, and so when she would relube the her um, dildo, she would smear on the dildo instead of on me. Just like, <laughs> uh, it's the worst feeling ever. And it's like an instant turn off. I'm like, you finally got me in the mood, and now you're going to ruin it. And we're just like we smear like, you like cream cheese yeah. on the bagel. Uh, <laughs> we were able to do that because we had been going slow and warming you yeah. up and getting you wet right. on your yeah. palm. Right. It exactly. was just for prolonged uh, exactly. experience. Exactly. Friction is a thing. It doesn't it matter. It doesn't mean you're not turned on. It doesn't mean you're not having fun. Friction is a thing. Also, yeah. a- anuses are not self lubricating. No, they're not like vaginas. No. Um, they don't function the same way because that's not their primary function. Yes. So um, you definitely but yeah. help it along. Help it along. Make playtime more fun. Make it more sexy. Make it last longer. Yes. Yeah. Yep. No, but I'm glad you didn't grossed out by the lube. It crossed yeah. my mind, but I was like, we're like, going to do this, but yeah. So but just, no, it, it, it did not bother me very much. There was like, ooh, that's kind of cold feeling. Right, but like, yeah. it wasn't like, it wasn't drippy or wet. No, like, yeah, we kept it. Thankfully, both of you know that I hate drippy and wet. Mm-hmm. I will also say that there is a difference. So I have had partners that just kind of like spray it all over me. Like, some, like no, chocolate no. syrup or something. Yeah. I don't do... Food play at yeah, all, right, period. Right, right. Yeah. And so, like, no, yeah. drizzling it, like, Ugh. like what if am it's I salad, like, am I a salad? Like, that, like this is not, not what I mean by toss my salad. That and like when they go to do anal, they I have a very Swipe. voluptuous ass. You do all over the cheeks. They just sprinkle it on the cheeks. I was like, you're not even getting to the part that you're supposed to be going little, like it to. The little holes. And so then it. they just like smear their dick on my. And I was like, no, no, but that no, is definitely not for no. you. That is 100 percent for them. Just yeah. so we're clear. <laughs> yeah. So application, I think, is really important. Yes. I know your bottom. I, as it were. I'm not a fan of the like really <laughs> high up, like swish, and watch it get like drizzled no. down. Oh god, those like no. baby oil pornos. I'm like, I would Ugh. rather I would rather lube myself than that's fair. Than have a partner do it who I know is gonna do it wrong and like ruin it for that's me. That's fair. I'm all about I got like the little squirt bottle. I'm all about like squirt. I'll do it myself. I'll put you know like, like I'll rah. put you in position and then you can do your thing. But I am directing the traffic here. Okay, yes. no, 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 no. That's the toppy part in you. That is me. Yes, yes. but that's, it's also like don't fuck this up. That's also the toppy part in me. <laughs> right? You're like no, I'll just and I'm just like okay. Myself, I guess thanks. this is what's happening now. I will say though, when I practice with your boy, he does like Sorry. the powder blue, right? So yeah, and then you reconstitute it with water. I would have loved if you added more water to it because it was so viscous and so slimy and it was like all over my glove and I was like flinging it across the room. I was like, I'm Spider-Man. Like, whoosh, like I was throwing webs everywhere and I was like, what do you do at home? He's like, oh, I do the same thing. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. And I'm like, that's that- disgusting. <laughs> You're such a boy. <laughs> such a boy. Yeah, so I was like, mm, no, you know, I'm going to bring my own. Because <laughs> I was like, Ugh. I was like, I want to change gloves because it was so... Dicky then that I, I like couldn't get the dick in because it kept like woo like shooting off the butt cheek like it wouldn't it wouldn't insert because it was just a little too excited. as aggressive and greedy as that butthole was it was like whoop nope not happening so um one thing that I always think about when I'm talking to people who are interested in pegging mm-hmm. is things that no one ever told me oh yeah let's do those which okay I admit it I first started pegging like. 11 years ago. Right. It's been a hot minute. The right. things I knew then versus the things I knew now, mm-hmm. dramatically different. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't really understand all too well, like, the way things were shaped in the anus, specifically. Ah, yes. 
like the corner there. Yeah, like I knew it was there, but I didn't really grasp like... You don't really think about it that much. Right. Uh, and I definitely... One of my very early pegging partners, I slammed into him full force way Ooh. too quickly <laughs> into the thing. Yeah. With a nine-inch dick. Oh, that organs. Yeah. Um, You're, I'm sorry. I think like even if... if you're trying this and it's new and you want that. Because I will admit, it's a very like aggressive, I fucking own you right. when I'm doing it. Yeah, kind of it's thing. definitely, like, pegging for me is definitely more like a, I definitely focus more on the domination side with pegging. With strapping, it's a little different. But I've never pegging. strapped a woman. <gasps> Let's take one of your cherries soon. We need to. Yes. We need to get our orchard. Right after this episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, we'll let you know how it went. <laughs> <laughs> um... But so my, so my experience is predominantly right. male side. I've also been pegged. Okay. But it was by a male individual. I've not been oh. pegged by a female. Cherry. Doubling up her cherry. We could do a choo choo train. You could oh, put it in her yay. and I could put it in you. Choo choo. Caitlin is excited. <laughs> <laughs> Sit on the towel, darling. Oh, hi. <laughs> she had to step away for a moment and she came back in to, we could do a choo choo. Right. I was like, oh no. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. <laughs> um, but so I think my like top tip to give somebody would be slow. Even if yes. you, even if it's that power trip, that like aggressive dominant, like yeah. I'm getting you. You can be aggressive and controlled. Yeah. A, that. Nothing B, sexier than absolute control. Oh, over self. The worst. Over they just self. Ah, uh, like, just the tip. Like, you know they want it so bad, and they're like, no, but I'm waiting. And I'm like, ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, there's something to be said. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But go slow, especially if you're new, or anytime you get a new attachment. Right. Or a new dildo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Be considerate of that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when you're going in, because you're not going to feel... You're going to feel jack shit is what you're going to feel. Nothing is the top. Yeah. From the penis anyway. You're not going to feel the dildo. Right. And so if you just slam in there and hit like tissue wall... You could tear something. You, you could, could perforate something. You could really hurt people. So In either hole. In yes. any hole. In any, uh, oh, any hole. You can tear lining. You can uh, cause actual some pretty bad damage uh, because these are not flesh. These are made from usually sturdy silicone or things like that. Um, they don't have the give that a, a pulsy penis has. Um, so, you, yeah, you can have some serious damage. You can have some serious hospital bills. And they will probably never want to do it again. Yeah. They also definitely the make sure you're – also definitely make sure your dildo or whatever attachment that you're using with your harness mm-hmm. for pegging or strapping is body safe. Yes. Don't use jelly dildos. I know they're so pretty. But they are so horrible for your body. Yes. Don't do that. That's gross. They're also damn near impossible to sanitize. Yes. yes. Because you they're cannot. so porous. They're so porous that they will, they can also, cause like, infections. They do melt. Be, they, they do, do melt. melt. But they can cause infections even if you're using it on the same person multiple times. Because well, it's full of bacteria. Yeah. Anyway, so, don't, like, don't, just don't buy that No trash. jelly donuts. Don't buy that trash. That's my input on that one. Keep it on your shelf as a... It can be a joke that you're going to smack somebody in the face with it. Yes. Right. But then it's going in the trash after that. Right. Or you know, if you want to keep it on your shelf as decor, but don't don't use those. Now. Decor. Ah, decor. No. I got that. Uh, yes. No. Speaking of responsible bottoming, let's talk about pegging in particular here. Let's talk about clean out for a little bit. Bottoms need to prepare. To be honest, we all know it comes out of butts. Poop. Shit happens. Shit, Shit happens. happens. So that is that is an assumed risk. I say as a, as a top, if. I expect my bottom to clean out. I do not surprise peg. Will not, shall not, should not surprise but anything because, again, you can actually cause damage by shoving waste back up into a person's organs. Also, All the gay a men poop on, covered... Nobody wants a poop colored penis. My alpha always says, you never want a poop noodle and you don't want to su- serve gravy. No, that's good enough. Poop noodle is what happens when you're fucking someone and you have a bio penis mm-hmm. And they did not clean out properly, and then you go to the bathroom after. Oh, and it, it comes out the oh, urethra, no! doesn't it? Oh, oh, that's pretty nice. That's oh, disgusting. No. All the gay men are like, mm-hmm. but for people that have never had anything up their butt, this includes women, um, and anyone who's just any men out there who just have not yeah. had things up your butt, whether it's because you're a straight man or you're just trying it for the first time, you're a gay bee, whatever it is. 
gotta clean up. There's a lot of great resources online. You, there's different ways to do it. They've got the little bulbs. They have like gravity bags. They have little hoses you can do attachments. So my experience, um, the bulbs are okay. They do take a long time. But they though. take they take tend to take a long time. Yeah, my my slave uses the bulb on me, but he just plays his audiobook and he just has his me time for like an hour. <laughs> and I'm like, but I have one bathroom in my house and I have to tinkle. <laughs> so let's <laughs> open your legs, I'll pee between them. <laughs> Gravity bags um, and the like shower attachments yeah. mm-hmm. tend to be for me the most efficient efficient way to get it done. And the hose attachments are not expensive. No, they aren't. You can um, attach it, take off the shower head. Some of them you attach and you can put the shower head on and it just stays there forever and then you just attach the hose to the connected piece, yeah? Yep, and there are some that um, the like shower heads that have the wand. Yeah. You can actually, there are ones that are made to actually connect directly to the wand thing. Oh, even so the, better. Wa- the oh, right. wand head comes off and, oh, then, and then you can on. put Oh, even easier. And um, I had a gravity a gravity style bag mm-hmm. from, um, I got it at CVS or Walgreens, one yeah. of those two. Yeah. Like it's a, a medical store. device, technically. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I like that one for traveling. Yeah, because I can pack it, pack it up, up and take it to a hotel or to a campground. You just is it a tip? You just, just change the tip, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, I really like both of those because they tend to be a little easier. Well, it's more volume. Yeah, you know what I mean. You can get more volume more quickly. Um, Always start slow. If you're please don't. That was my next thing. Please uh, don't turn that faucet on full blast again. You no. will perforate your organs. So in in the sphincter area. There are two. Yes. There is the one. The, the external. The yes. external. And then yes. there's the, the second sphincter, which mm-hmm. is like right up at the curve. Right. You don't generally need to clean out past the second sphincter. And so a lot of people, their first couple of times of prepping, they, over-prep. they overprep. One, you can't put like five gallons of water into your ass. And, and not ex- leak. And not have a problem. Right. Um... So you start small. Mm-hmm. The bulbs are nice for people who are just kind of getting used to it because they right. can gauge how much how much yeah. it is. It's a weird feeling because you, I mean, you're gonna shit water, so it's definitely be on standby near the toilet. You can do it in yeah. the shower too, like you know. But uh, I like to be near the toilet. Yep. Um, so you basically slide the tip of the item into your anus, mm-hmm. not very far. It does not have to go like all the way no, in there. Just like, enough to like just be the past the lips. Yep. And you flush into it a small amount of water. Right. Which is why the bulbs are good for when you're learning because you just fill the bulb and when the bulb is empty, that, that, there you go. And you don't want to do a large amount of volume at the first, like no. as you're starting. Start with a small amount. You might have to do two. Yeah, a couple. Or three. Them, yeah. But if you fill it too much and you get past that second sphincter, Ooh, yeah. it's going to kick in a whole mess of trouble yeah. um and then you're gonna the be there for like two hours right which if you are taking a very large insertable or if you're getting fisted and by fisted i mean forearmed you know you're gonna need to clean past that second sphincter and that's a much longer process but if you're taking i'd say like an average insertable anywhere from five to i would say even eight or nine inches yeah you don't need to go that far per, you know personally i don't think you have to go that far or if you're just taking fingers or things like that um you don't need to, to clean that far. Um, uh, not cold water. Not cold water, but also not hot water. No. Because you can burn, you can burn the inside, inside of, of your ass. Yeah. It is... I have not done it to myself because I I'm very can't careful. I imagine how I can't much imagine it would be comfortable. So you want to use kind of tepid water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it's too cold, you're going to like shock Ooh. and cramp your butt. You'll know if it's too cold. And if you use too hot, you take the risk of burns. Right. So kind of a, a tempid, lukewarm... Water is best. Less than bathtub water. Less than bathtub yeah. water. Yes. So speaking of safety and mm-hmm. uh, anal play, mm-hmm. uh, please don't use that desensitizing lube. Like uh. I, it's so dangerous though because you're ta- going, ta- you're bubble. not going to feel anything, and so that's when the top can basically go as hard as they want to, but you're not going to feel if damage is being done, right. and that's a big thing. Is everyone, especially. Um, if it's done More right, so for if like, it's done right, you're not gonna want to be desensitized. Right, to it. you're like gonna want to feel. The thing it. is, so many people are so scared of that pain because they hear anal is painful it was done that they're like, "Well, let's just do the desensitizing lube, and then I won't have to worry about the pain." 
but you'll have to worry about the pain three days later when you tear something yeah. and have to go to the hospital. Tear your butthole. And so then like, you gotta add that's my, that's my input torn on that. You had to get stitches on your butthole, and that's embarrassing. Tell the doctor what happened. Well, we didn't know what we were doing, and now I have stitches on my butthole. Yeah, so that's that's my insert mm-hmm. for uh, yes. anal safety. If like, please don't. If it's done, if it's done correctly, you're not gonna want to miss it. You yeah, know, you're gonna want to enjoy. It. Like even if you don't end up being like a muck and I, where you're like butt stuff all the time, <laughs> um, it can be enjoyable for both penis owners, vagina owners, everyone in the middle, um, if done well. Mm-hmm. You know, like she said, a muck said, take your time, lube it up, know your dick, and know your bottom. And communicate. Oh communicate. my god! Keep talking. It's sexy. You we can love make it. it super sexy. Make it part of like the dirty. Yeah, talk. you can do the whole. You like that? You like that? You dirty tramp? You can do that. You know you and and some people that some for some people they want to break the headspace. They want to break the mood. So you can ask pointed questions in a sexy way to check in. Yes. You know, do you like that? Does that feel good? You know, what can I do? That kind of thing. You can frame it around them. You know, I can think of like an example. Yes. If you were railing on someone, right, and just go into town, and you needed to check on them, mm-hmm. them to make sure that it's not too much, right. You could be like, "Oh, do you like taking my dick like this?" Right. Yeah. Because you're, it's still that it's my yeah. dick. I'm taking you. Right. However, this is your opportunity, and if there's too much hesitation, you should probably just hit the brakes just a little bit to see what's going on. Or if it's not like a a hard D type thing, like right. Oh, don't you love take like? Right. Do you love taking this? Right. Does, yeah. Love it's a way of this inside you. Right. Yeah. Oh, no. like oh look, you're talking dirty now. Huh. Oh. Look at you. She said that she's she's a verbal talk. There you go. She... Nah. 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 No. <laughs> that was the extent of the dirty talk, was it? I don't dirty talk well. I'm like that. I don't know. I'm, I'm like that, that real well. I'm like that bad maybe with a kiss going on. I'm like, oh, spank me. I'm a bad mommy. What do you do? Oh no, like, bad llama. Yeah. I. <laughs> I fail. I get an F in a dirty talk. Lies. Only when you think. Only when you think too hard about it. I guess. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she did great. Normally, I don't talk. So we'll change that. She talks a lot. She talks in German. She, <laughs> <laughs> she does. She talks in German. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Anything else we should cover? Um, let's talk. Let's change gears from buttholes to uh, vaginas real quick. Back to strapping. Um, so, the vagina as a whole, um, ha, 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 whole, ha, a whole. Ha. Um, You're so kind. Um, in, unintentional. That makes it even better. Mm-hmm. So, the schematics of the vagina, um, there's not as much tunnel room as with the anus, obviously, um, and you have things like the cervix, which is like the door, like this is it, go no further, you shall not pass, all of that nonsense. For those that are not aware, it is a very short, it's stretchy to a degree. But it is not that long. But it's not that long. Right. Now, if you have a pulsy penis and you are endowed in length, you can cram more in because a pulsy penis actually gives. It will actually scrunch up on itself. And so... Just because you can take like a 9 or 10 inch pulsy penis doesn't necessarily mean the same strategy might apply with a unforgiving hard silicone dildo insert one. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, the cervix is kind of like your stopping point. Um, be mindful if your partners have things like IUDs. Mm-hmm. You will get poked in the penis. Well, we won't feel it, but you could shift the... Mm-hmm. I have had that happen. You've had a you've had a real dick shifter. Um, I did have yeah. a real. So I have an IUD. I mm. absolutely love it. I'm going on like your 14 ish of IUD being too. of being an IUD user. And yeah, I've had I had a dick rearrange my IUD. And we joke about getting your organs rearranged, but no, really, you can. It did. Um, I had to go have it adjusted. Well, no, I had to have removed. it removed. Oh yeah, Please. I had to have it removed and then replaced with another, which is a Incredibly horrendous. Painful. It is situation. Painful. It's quick, but it's very painful. Yeah, so don't um, do that with your dildos. Be mindful of your partner. And if they have a tilted cervix, um, that makes a world of difference. Some women are have um, bruising issues with theirs. So you can bruise your inside. You can bruise the cervixes. You'll yeah. feel it soreness the next day. Again, a strap-on is a much harder material than a pulsy penis or fingers and things like that. So you have to be mindful of the force you're using. If the bottom says too much, it's too much. Be more mindful than yeah. if you were playing another kind of 
right. thing where they might be trying to resist you. Right. Take it as is. Yeah. If they say it's too much or it's too deep, back, back that dick up. Right, because you can't feel it. So you have to, you have got to obey your bottom in that case because you've got to take their word for it. And bottoms feel empowered to tell them that. Yes. That Speak it's up. too much or it's a bad angle. I know for me, angles are very Oof, yeah. explicit. Yeah. You got something in your mind? Oh, no. I was just going to say because, like, at that point, it's not going to affect what they're feeling because they're not feeling anything. No. So as a bottom who gets very, like, nervous about, like, speaking up because I don't want to affect their pleasure, they're not getting pleasure from how deep their right. dildo is going it's a inside mental, of you. It's a it's mental, a mental pleasure. pleasure that isn't going to change if they're making shallower thrusts. Right. Not really. So. No, we're not going to. From one of the body Im- bottomiest bottoms. The bottomiest bottoms. Loophole. Self-titled. Self-titled bottom bottom. Yeah. Um, it's not inaccurate though. It's true. It it's really true. isn't. <laughs> it's true. Um, a lot of the times also I find, um, when I'm using a strap on queer women, like with, I say with straight girls, but you know, <laughs> it's a loosey goosey term, right? You know what I mean? But, uh, women that primarily identify either as lesbian or as bisexual or just queer in general, um, how you refer to your strap can affect the experience. Not just we're not just talking about you know the technical how tos, but um, there's emotions behind this. You know, especially if you if you are a lesbian and you're not attracted to men, you're attracted to penises, but you can st- you're still allowed to enjoy penetrative play. Mm-hmm. That does Absolutely. not make you less of a lesbian because you enjoy penetrative play. Some women have very sensitive internal walls. You know, the G-spot's a real thing. Some the clitoris women, is so much more than just what you see on the outside. Yes, yes. the organ actually runs all the way back, which is yes. why underneath the bladder, which is why you sometimes feel like you have to pee when it's overstimulated because it's literally causing your bladder to vibrate. Um, you have to give yourself permission to enjoy that kind of play if that's what you like and you've got to be able to communicate with your partners um whether you're in a relationship or you're getting this done like in a play session or just between friends whatever um that you're comfortable receiving or giving penetrative play and that it doesn't it has no effect on your orientation has no effect on your status in any community on whether you top or bottom for this kind of play um but and also when you refer to it some Queer women are fine if you call it your dick. Some queer women are not fine. Some women prefer to call it the strap, call it anything but that. Like we talked about earlier, some women are not comfortable with it resembling a penis. For personal preferences, some women don't care. But again, talk to your partners. Find out what works for you. Find out what works for them. You know, some people don't want to see it. Like, do it from behind. I don't want to see it. I just want to feel it. Um, And be courteous. Bring that doorbell. Play with that clitoris. Mm-hmm. You know, encourage it, that kind of thing, and just leave it hanging. And if you, you have a partner, regardless of gender, mm-hmm. um, and you're interested in doing this, and they're interested in mm-hmm, doing mm-hmm. this, but they might be a little hesitant about the size and the shape and the color of your dick, mm-hmm. um, take them, work together to right. pick a dildo. Pick a yeah. dildo, yeah. Let them, you know... Whoever's going to be wearing the harness, pick one that's going to be comfortable for them. Right. And then whoever's going to be receiving, work right. with the giver mm-hmm. to identify one that works for them or arouses them right. or looks interesting. Right. Make it part of date night. Make Go fun. and Make buy fun. a new toy. Make it fun. Like, it doesn't have to be this clinical, non-fun, like, negotiation thing. Like, it can be sexy and it can be fun and it can be enjoyable. If it's and, not like, sexy and fun, evening. it's not worth doing. We have a we have a really big sex shop here mm-hmm. that's really well known, and they literally have I've said literally a lot there. It's okay. It's okay. That was terrible. It has a giant row of strap on compatible on, dildos. Yeah, an entire row that's probably thirty feet long. Yeah. I have absolutely gone there and wandered Sprouse, around yeah. with a partner and just been like, ooh, oh, yeah, ooh. About this one, this one. Actually, that's the location I bought my first job on. Oh, nice. Oh, See, when I go to sex shops and I'm like, I go in, I go for the laundry, and then I get out. Oh, no. There's so much more to see. Uh, it makes me so nervous. We're taking you. We're in the world's we done being to, over. Mm, okay. I wonder if I have content. We need to take her and actually record, like, together in the shop. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, that'd be fun. Write that oh, down. God. Write that down. Um, crap. There was one more thing I wanted to mention. I can't remember what it was. Hmm. Oh, 
getting to know f- figuring out what's comfortable for you and your partner when i when when i use when i when i use a strap with a uh, with queer women um i will often not always but often offer to use the dildo on them without it being attached let them you know open them up with it so they can get a feeling for it without it the added pressure of it you know even getting fucked by it necessarily like um, whether they want to ease themselves onto it or you just use it like, you know, you hold on to it and push it in and out and that kind of opening them up and familiarizing themselves with the toy itself. Easing yourself onto the toy, mm-hmm. even though later it might be more of a like power exchange kind of thing, easing yourself onto it can help relieve the stress Anxiety. because you're kind of controlling right. the depth and everything. Oh, I love, I, I'm a fan of that actually. I like to use that actually in power exchange. Like if I have. Uh, for either pegging or strapping, if I have the harness on, I'll line you up the bottom and in- encourage in some case or force, quote, quote, the bottom to back themselves onto it. Like, oh, you want the stick? Slide onto it for daddy. That kind of thing. Yeah. But, <laughs> 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 but uh, not, you know, sometimes it's more of like, okay, baby girl, back into it. Take your time. I'm not going, again, I can't feel the penis. I'm not in any urgency with it, you know, and I think. Yeah. And sometimes when you're a penis owner, you know, it's very exciting and it feels good and you're just like, I want to get to it. Um, so sometimes there's a bit more urgency there. If I can't feel the dick, it, it, I have all the time in the world. Take your time, girl. Like I, I pretty much it. always, when receiving anal, I pretty much always require that I'll slide onto I'm it. the one that's yeah. backing into mm-hmm. it. Ugh. Now, you might be able to rail the fuck out of me But let me open up this minutes, rose but for you. <laughs> Let me get acquainted. It well, might like take to me a minute. Slide onto it with the Hitachi at the same time. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that is some yeah. eye rolling goodness right there. I don't do a lot of anal, but when I do, if that Hitachi's on my clit, it's... that's that's a that's primo right there. Yeah. So so put that on the list as well. Anal training. Put that for the kitty. Put that. <laughs> We're just adding to the cherry tree. Yeah. Anything we want to add, kind of as final thoughts for pegging, strapping for tops or bottoms, how tos or kind of things to consider. I think it's important to remember that being on the receiving or giving side of this mm-hmm. does not change your sexuality nope. or your nope. s- your space within a relationship the community or the relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, both penis owning and vagina owning individuals mm-hmm. can use strap yep. strap ons. Uh-huh. Um, there's a whole variety of reasons right. that they might. Mm-hmm. Um, I will tell you, a DP with a strap on and a dick. Oh, it's good times. Yeah. Uh, so you have those. There's lots of different reasons for doing it. Kitty's now trying to like think about Sorry. how I did this. She's like, which no, I I know how you did it. I just never mind. No, she's no, she's fantasizing about. Yes, it. that's what she's doing. Um, but that doesn't change your sexuality either. No, no. that's the thing. And. Um... Have fun. Have fun. You have the safety tips. We encourage you, as always, to do your own research. Talk to some people that do it, that are tops and bottoms, and do these plays more regularly. So you can have those conversations. Don't be afraid to ask those embarrassing questions because, look, they had the same questions at one point, too. And it's always better to ask as opposed to fuck it up later. Everyone starts somewhere. Gotta start somewhere. Absolutely. True. Oh, kitty, you're all out of bubbles. Oh, no. Hold on. Unacceptable. <laughs> As a recent receiver, oh gosh. do you have any tips? I honestly don't know. It's okay. something that like I'm still processing because it's a very yeah. new experience. Sure. It um, was very recent. It, it was, was very recent, yeah. Like I think two weeks or something yeah, like that. Something like that. It's like it's something that I'm still processing. It was very enjoyable. I really enjoyed the experience. I enjoyed the communication that happened throughout the experience. I enjoyed the time taken with the experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I was very, very lucky that it was with two wonderful women who respect me mm-hmm. and wanted me to enjoy it. Um, Aww. Uh, I tried I to blush. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, it. Everything's kind of said. Everything's kind of said. Well, that's too. All right. Yeah. So yeah. stay safe. Have fun, kids. I mean, yes. do what you got to do. And remember, trouble, trouble comes, comes in threes. threes. And get fucked.